the Washington Huskies have elected to receive, and Batonzo's kickoff has gone into the end zone, and the Huskies will put it in play first down on their 20-yard line. This is Wayne Mack, along with Burt Jones and Doug Morrow, as we take a look at Steve Pallour, a hot quarterback who hit his last 15 passes in the game against Michigan to pull that one out. He's hit on 74% of his passes in this young season. The Huskies are 2-0. The Tigers are 1-1. One and one. And to say that this game is important would only be redundant. So let's get on with it and watch Hines and Hunt, the running back. Hunt, number 45. Hines, number 22, is a tailback. They're in an eye formation. Right out to the left and right, and Hines gets the call. And he's got down at the 21-yard line. Malosan is in there on the tackle. Let's get some comment here from Bert and Doug. Uh, tell us what you expect and what you see already. Well, I think, uh, Wayne, what we're doing here, they're just mixing it up a little bit. The LSU secondary didn't line up as they normally have the last couple of weeks. And I think they fooled them on that first play. They tried to get outside, and they didn't. That's where LSU's had its problems over the years. All right. Larry Michael, Lance Dodson, Ted Brosey, Dan Ernesty, Ricky Mallory, Dennis Mayer. That uh, offensive picture for the Huskies has a throw out to Stransky, and he's knocked out of bounds as he crosses a 30-yard line. But the official says he stepped out of bounds on about the 26, a five-yard pickup. So it'll be third down coming up for the Huskies. So Pallor, who's been hotter than a depot stove, is ready. He's a 6'3", 210. Sterling Hines is a 190-pound tailback. Hunt is a 225-pound fullback. And Stransky is one of his busy wide receivers. He likes to hit the flanker, the split end, and his tight end has caught 10 passes. So we've got a third and four, the first possession of the evening for the Huskies. Stransky in motion. Pallor drops. Caught by Stransky. Knocked down by Dale. Jeffrey Dale came up and made a spectacular play on that, stopping him short of the first down. It looks like Washington may be going for that pass completion record as opposed to just coming out and trying to play football. They've been known to throw short, but those are three passes or two passes less than four or five yards. Here you see it going to the weak side, just throws it out there. Jeffrey Dale comes up and makes a play on it, short of the first down, gives LSU the opportunity to get his first possession of the ball. A good play by Jeffrey Dale from Winfield, Louisiana. And the Huskies have only averaged 29 yards per punt, a high snap. He gets off a line drive, could be brought back in a good position, but they're gonna let it roll. Well, the Huskies, uh, lucky on that one because the ball rolled inside the 35-yard line and the Tigers will put it in play after a 39-yard punt and let's take a look here at the Tigers offense as they trot on the field. Very fortunate break for Washington that time. Here Eric. you see LSU's offensive set. Eric Martin is a guy, Wayne, that hasn't had too much impact so far this season. I think we can look for him to play a part tonight. All right, Smith and Barry, the anchors on that offensive line, 290 pounds of tackle. Wickersham's going to whip it out on first down, and it's caught by Fontenot, and he's up to the 43. Going to the flanker, and Bestie Jackson makes the tackle. And Wayne, it looks like LSU is going to try a little bit of uh, Washington still. There you see Lang, Wickersham, Hillard, Fontenot in the backfield for LSU. They're throwing a short pass, coming right out of the box, throwing the football. Maybe that'll work. All right, here we go. Second and one, nine-yard pickup. Junius Durrell in motion. Pitch back to Dalton Hilliard. He finds a little crease, gets over the 45. Well, it's good to see that Hilliard looks healthy, fellas. Well, he looked healthy that time, and the little crease was almost big enough for him to get through. LSU lined up in the I formation. Here you see Washington's defensive line, and those three all have a lot of experience. All Letterman, all returning, and LSU's going to have to control those three. Their linebackers on the outside, Hill and Small, are real hitters. In the secondary is where Washington is pretty suspect. All right, and their inside linebackers are their leading tacklers, too. Single setback now with Fontenot in motion to the top of your screen, and Wickersham drops deep, sets up, and whips one out here, and it is incomplete, and I don't know where the where that one was intended for, gents. He threw it. Looked like he was going to Dalton there, just a little bit high. Pearson, Jackson, all Britain, and Leaphart in the secondary for the uh, Huskies of Washington. And uh, so we've got here a second and 10 for the Tigers. No score in the ball game. 12.25 to go here in the first quarter. The Huskies had to punt it away after their first possession. 
And the Tigers of LSU, a packed house here in Baton Rouge, and a great, beautiful night for football. Wickersham, he's got it, Eric Martin on a slant. There's a fine thrown football there, and Jeff Wickersham just stuck it right in there. Eric Martin, as he saw it coming out on a quick slant, it was a fine play as they continue to take advantage of this short passing game. It can be very effective for LSU. Bert, I tell you, it's interesting because here you see Wickersham on the short drop hitting the quick post to Martin. He made a nice catch despite the safety coming over on the inside to give him a lick. First and ten. Tigers with the football, moving it in Washington territory. Pick back to Dalton Hilliard, and he is smothered. Good lateral pursuit, and it was Ron Holmes, a left tackle, number 90, a junior who led the charge. The defensive line for the Huskies is uh, small, relatively speaking, averaging about 240 pounds. Holmes is uh, 240, Browning, the nose guard, is 245, Madsen is 252. So they are not big, but they rely on quickness and experience. Uh, they have all lettermen except one in that defensive unit. So we've got a second and ten now. Two wideouts to the left. Motion from Hilliard, who was set up on a flanker, and Wickersham scampers, looks. Away we go, deep, way overthrown. He got rid of that one, didn't he? Yes, he did, and it was a fine play on his part. He didn't have anyone to throw to, but he came out and just threw it out of the end zone. Consequently, LSU just comes up. With another down, no problem. He just got out of a bad jam there. And Bert, it looks like LSU is varying their formations a lot more. They've run the I formation, but sent the, the man in motion across the formation really to establish a slot. Jerry Stovall looks like he's put in a lot of new things this week. That time, they came up, they had a wing to the right, they had a split into the left, ran the wing across the formation to set up a trips on the left side and three quick receivers there. Third and ten. Once again, motion by Hilliard. Wickersham looks open, hot, down to the 21. Pottenau again, 16 yards. And that's that same formation. They ran Burt the last play. They ran the trips with the guy coming in motion across, but ran a little bit different pattern. It would say we just see a good combination pass route. You see Dalton trying to occupy a couple people deep. Fontenot no coming underneath, making the play and almost breaking loose for a touch. And a salute to the offensive line with some good blocking. They held their blocks there beautifully and gave Wickersham time to find his man. Here you see Jeff coming off the side saying, what I do, Jerry? First down, 21-yard line. We need a real good play here. Give me five or six yards and I'll have them in a bad position. 10.49 to go in the first quarter. No score in the ball game. This is the Tigers' first possession. Do they appear more crisp and businesslike tonight? They appear a lot crisper to me. Of course, offensively, they're doing a lot of things that we haven't seen them do the first two games. But defensively, I think, is where I was impressed more than anything on the first series. They came out like they were ready to play. And that's a, a far cry from the way they played in the first two ball games. This is what I think Jerry Stovall has looked for in his team to have the defensive players all want to get around the football and all be in on that tackle. And of course, the game is young. We've got 10.45 left in the first quarter still. But this is the type of effort he needs to have that excellent football team that he wants this year. So the defense can uh, sort of set the pace for the offense then, right? They well, seem to work together all the time. And uh, the main thing is they are changing it up a, a little bit more than what they have in the previous two games. It, it's been effective thus far. Washington hasn't prepared for this. And let's just see if we can continue throughout. All right, let's go. First and 10. The Tigers have the football breaking out of that huddle. Mitch Andrews, a tight end, takes up position on the right side. And we've got two wide outs split. High formation again for Wickersham. A little shift in the line there for the Husky defense. There's Hildred with the ball. And the little 197-pounder from Patterson, Louisiana, wrecks his way down to the 15-yard line. J.C. Pearson made the hit. Well, that's a real good play because what people really don't always know is the yardage gets tougher as you get inside the 20-yard line. The defense doesn't have to cover near as much of the field. And it's just tougher to get in there. So you have to have a special offense in order to play the plus 20, as I used to call it. Wickersham is uh, three for five for 41 yards. Down about the 12-yard line on that one. And close to a first down. The little guy looks tough and quick, just like he did before that Rice game. Vince Albretton, the strong safety. 
six foot, 200 pound senior made the tackle on the little guy, Dalton Hilliard. And he's right close to it, LSU. That play is the first running play they've run into the wide side of the field. They run Hilliard three times in the weak side, and it looks like they're gonna vary their entire running game to use the complete field. Third and one, Fontenot in motion. Dalton gets the call, hey, and he plows over the right side, over the right shoulder of the tackle, and gets himself a first down. Jets, how do you like that power play? It was a good one, just straight ahead, give me a lead blocker. Mr. Lang has been doing it all year long. You look on the charts inside the dressing room, he is their number one blocker. And you know, they're gonna run behind Lance Smith and Kevin Langford on the right side of the line anytime they have that opportunity. All right, it's first down on the eight-yard line. 9.23 to go here in the first quarter. No score. The Tigers knocking at the door. Hilliard gets the call. Down inside the five piled up. Dean Browning, the nose guard, number 99, leads the charge. 245-pound senior. Wickersham. What's Wickersham looking for there? A little signal? A play. Hey, Jerry, send me a play in. We've got a second down on the four. Second and goal from the four for the Tigers of LSU. They're up against the ball club that's 2-0 this year that came from behind to beat Michigan in the fourth quarter that won 10 and lost two last year. Hilliard again to the right. There he goes. Touchdown. you needed to get them off to the right foot just a power sweep to the right side they lined up in a tight wing formation to the left and sent the wing back across in motion to the right simple handoff to Hilliard Wayne and excellent blocking again by the right side of the Tiger offensive line they got the corner with no problem and it turned out to be a touchdown Tom Joe's kick is up and good. So with 8.30 remaining on the clock in the first quarter, the Tigers lead 7 to nothing. We'll be back in a moment. Jackson and Hines are deep. 12 plays, 66 yards, 4 minutes and 58 seconds. A business-like operation for the Tigers of LSU. Hilliard, a four-yard run, his fourth touchdown of the campaign. The kick by Batanzo. One yard deep. Green is knocked down at the 17. Washington has not had to return many kickoffs this year. Chris Cruz down there to make the hit, and they're averaging 17 yards per return, and that's where they get knocked down on this one. And Wayne, there's nothing like picking up your uh, defense, as you see here, by scoring seven points. We all saw Chapman, Burks, and Dubrock. They're fired up, and they're ready to play. All right. The Tigers look like they mean business. Steve Pelour, the quarterback from Washington, Takes up position behind the center. He has a single setback. Now he brings Hunt in motion. And he gives it to Hines, who's caught behind the line. Rydell Malasson and Eric Kittick chased him down. And when you look at that defense, LSU had 10 people as short a time as that play took to develop. LSU ended up with 10 people around the ball. Here you see the handoff to Hines in the backfield deep. 
He tries to get outside to the rock. Kiddock comes over. Right Elma Lawson follows up, and eight other defensive players are within three yards of that picture. Second and 13. Pelour, quick count, looks, brings it down, rolls out. He's being chased. Throws it to the ground. Is it intentional grounding? Clarence Osborne, Big Oz, the freshman, chasing him down, and it is no flag. I want to hear a quarterback tell me, was that intentional grounding? Tell me, quarterback. <laughs> Even though he's from Washington, there's no such thing as intentional grounding. But I tell you, Doug, you know, this is the first time I've been in Tiger Stadium at night, and it certainly is on fire. It adds a whole new dimension, and I think it's picked up the LSU team a great deal. They're coming out like they haven't come out in the two previous games. That breaks a string of 16 consecutive passes. Jefferson is in a nickel defense now for the Tigers. On third and 13, Pelour is hounded back, throws, and who's got it? Jeffrey Dale intercepted. Incomplete. Jeffrey Dale cut in front and grabbed it. And listen to this play. These people are going absolutely crazy. You see Mike the Tiger leading the fans on, but we don't need Mike the Tiger to lead them on tonight. A great interception by Dale. A crossing pattern, Washington ran, and Dale just ran the ball down before the receiver. Here you see Pelour drop back. His receiver's coming from the left across the field, and Jeffrey Dale just beat him to the ball. And that's another completion for Steve Pelour. Botano, motion, coming this way. Gary James hurdles, gets yardage. Robert Leaphart took him out. Wow, this is a different football team than we saw in the first two games, gents. There's no doubt about that. It sure is, and I'm not so sure it may not be Tiger Stadium at night. <laughs> well, it's a magic place to be. The ambience, the excitement, the tension. Hey, Wayne, what does ambience mean? That's something you get hauled away in if you get hurt in a car wreck. <laughs> That's what I thought. First and ten. Big run by Gary James. He gets a call, drops it wisely falls on the football you know that might show that he is has excellent ability most people would try to get down there pick it up i dropped the ball let's get something out of it but he didn't he just fell on the football just like you're supposed to do and say all right let's go for third down now uh, washington's offense has been just about double their opponents and uh, lsu is showing tonight that they're ready and rare in a row for the second and 13. Once again, a wing back with a single setback. Lang drifts out, but Wickersham looks this way and overthrows Martin. I'm not so sure that was an overthrow, Wayne. It looked like it went right through Eric's hands. I feel like Eric probably thinks that he should have caught that ball, and typically he does because he has hands like glue. Sure does. That was a very catchable pass. He should have made that catch. Wickersham had the ball just perfect. There you see passing efficiency of those two. That's two pretty good quarterbacks. Jeff's got to cut down those interceptions, but there was no chance that time. Third down and long. All right, what do we do here? The Tigers lead seven to nothing. Jeff Wickersham, draw play to Lang. And he's down to the 15 and will go for the field goal. Well, here they come. Krakowski and Kelly, the inside linebackers, make the hit. And Batanzo will go for the field goal here as the Tigers lead seven to nothing and three more would look mighty good with 6.20 to go in the first quarter. You saw a pretty good recovery by Washington's defense because Lang had a hole big enough where he could have gone down to about the five yard line. Great recovery by Washington's linebackers in secondary to make the tackle. 32 yard attempt. Batanzo's kicks it high and straight. It's 10 to nothing, Tigers, 5.57 to go in the first quarter. We'll be back in a moment.
75 degrees. The Tigers lead 10 to nothing. The Huskies must be stunned. The kickoff by Batonzo. Green, a yard deep. Hit! Oh, oh what special team! 11 yards. Get the license number on that truck. <laughs> I think it was Mr. Rehaj. I tell you, last week that guy liked to play football. <laughs> oh, brother. A nice cool breeze in Tiger Stadium, but the Tigers are fired up. 5.48 to go, first quarter, 10 to nothing, Tigers. The defense now gets the call. Four plays, 14 yards, 32-yard field goal. Took him a minute and 37. Previously scored on a four-yard run by Hilliard. Steve Pallor. Bodies are flying everywhere. And that was a fine play by Greg Dubrock, it looked like, coming inside, sliding off the block and coming up making the play. Those Tigers, I don't know what Jerry Stovall fed them for supper today. Maybe he didn't feed them at all. Second and 11. Steve Pillar must wonder what hit him. Draw play again. Gets a yard or two at the most. The Tigers weren't fooled. They stayed home. Well, they really are playing well as a defensive unit. Mike DeWitt is in there at safety. Jeffrey Dale has injured his shoulder, apparently. He's down on the bench with his pads and his jersey off. But DeWitt came up on that last play. Two plays in a row and faced great hits at the line of scrimmage. Now here comes Jefferson in, and Dubrock checks out as they go into a nickel defense on third and ten. Leading ten to nothing. Pelour hitting 74% of his passes going into this game. He's been intercepted by Dale, has been harassed by the defense. He drops back to the goal line, whips one deep for Green, deep, and he made a great catch. No. No, he dropped it. Oh, he had her back. He's back to us he had it and dropped it and the Tigers dodge a bullet here we see dropping back I wish I bet he thinks he or wishes he were that fast but you see an excellent effort there just laid out for the ball and it obviously hit on the other side all right so they'll punt it away and remember the Huskies averaging only 29 yards a punt by Zimmerman he managed 39 on his first punt but he took down a high snap and just Got off a line drive that bounced for a while. So the punting game, uh, they've had punts as short as 11 yards this year. It's a problem for the Huskies. And, another and it's run. another short one. Hobbley goes for it, then dodges it, and it's loose. And who's got it? That was not fielded too well by the Tigers' special team. They didn't know what to do with it. And Washington came up with it. A a critical error by LSU to even try to touch that punt. The ball was inside the 45-yard line regardless and was going to roll dead there. That's just enthusiasm, but golly gee, you know, Jerry Stovall doesn't want that enthusiasm. Here you see Zimmerman with a very, very short end-over-end -end punt. Last time he punted, the ball rolled pretty well. This time, I think Hobley was trying to get out of the way, but the ball touched him and then hit the back. Uh, who was that, 52? Tony Nephew hit the back of his foot. Washington ended up with the ball on the 43. All right, a big break for the Huskies on the kicking game. Strong left this time as they shift. Steve Pallour drops to throw. His longest completion this year, 20 yards. And that's Stransky on the far side, and he's knocked down by Sean Burks. 14-yard pickup. That's good pursuit on LSU's defense because he got by the corner there and had Sean Burks not have been there, it might have been touched. And Pelour's got a fine arm. He threw the ball across the field. That's a tough, a tough pass to throw because you need somebody that can get the ball out there, but it makes the defense stretch so far to try to cover that pass. You have to watch Stransky. He's a good receiver. There's a give to Hunt, the fullback, straight ahead. He's the only fullback that's carried the ball for Washington. They've had four tailbacks share the duty, but Hunt's the only one that's carried it from the fullback spot. So a second and six now after a four-yard pickup. 
out by Kevin. And gentlemen, you know, to a couple of degrees of enthusiasm have cooled off from this crowd with that, that fumble on the punt return. LSU's got to got to keep charged up right here. They, Washington got some momentum back, not necessarily enough to turn the game over, but they got a little back with that recovery. Mike DeWitt is in for Jeffrey Dale. DeWitt from Laurel, Mississippi, and we have a timeout being called here by a Washington. The University of Washington takes a timeout with 3.04 remaining. Here in the first quarter, and the Tigers leading 10 to nothing. So what do we do here, gentlemen? The Tiger defense uh, has certainly conducted itself well. What, are they, what do you expect from Washington now? Now that they know what the Tigers are doing on defense pretty well, what do you expect? Well, LSU's been changing it up on defense. They haven't blitzed yet on defense like they typically do by this time of the game. So I think that's the reason they called time out there. They might have felt the blitz was coming. They were in the wrong formation. They were uncovered because the fullback was out on the wing and the quarterback probably would have, would have been sacked because there was no one to pick up the inside blitzers. So I think he elected to call timeout on that. Now let's see if LSU might come out and change it. And I think that what you've seen really is LSU's defense being more enthusiastic more than any technical trickery. They're just playing hard and playing good tonight. Washington's on the 38-yard line between the 37 and 38. 10 of 11 times this season that they've been inside of the 40, they have scored. All right, let's see if the Tigers can break that string. DeFeo now is the fullback. Kalur drops back, whoops one out here again. It's short and caught by his tight end over around the 30-yard line. An eight-yard pickup. And I'm glad he was tripping when he caught the ball because I'm not sure what the coverage was on that one. It obviously wasn't the correct coverage because he was wide open. Somebody Larry Michael didn't catch a pass last year, and that's his 11th catch this year. And he's and the fellow who caught the two-point conversion against Michigan last week for the win. First and 10 now for Washington. They can get back into this ball game. And there's a give to Jackie Robinson, who's getting some play time tonight, and Roland Barbe makes the tackle. Jacques or Jackie Robinson, who was in uh, the coach's doghouse. Don James gave him residence there when he showed up uh, overweight and slow, but he's getting some action tonight. Second and six now after a four yard pickup, 2.30 to go in the first quarter. Steve Pelour, whose brother Scott Pelour is a linebacker with the New Orleans Saints. There's motion by Stransky to the bottom of your screen. Going deep this time for Green, and he grabbed it. What a great catch because he was well covered, well covered by DeWitt and Hobley. Green ran a corner pattern, and really the ball was thrown where I think LSU would have wanted it thrown if it was going to be thrown on that play, and Green went up, took the ball out of the air. Here you see Pelour going back. He knows where Green's going to be on the corner pattern, lays the ball out there. LSU's got two people there. Green just goes up and outfights him. That's 24 yards. That's their longest pass completion of the year. Jockey Robinson into the end zone. Touchdown, Huskies. Well, the fumble punch, which gave the Washington Huskies a second life, and they took advantage of it and moved the ball in to score, and it's 10 to 6. That's true, but almost as bad as the, the fumble punt was that last corner pattern. In the double coverage, the secondary just wasn't able to come up and make the play. They should have at least knocked the football down and most probably come up with an interception with the ball hanging in the air like it was. They just didn't break from the ball like they should have. All right, ready for the kick from Jagger, the freshman, and it's good. Jeff Jagger, first freshman who earn a kicking job in a long time at Washington and he gives the boys their seventh point and it's 10 to 7 LSU now and that sort of quiets the crowd a little bit here because you hate to see another team get one of your mistakes and run with it. Well, man, I tell you, if five plays ago or six plays ago, if you had said the score is going to be 10 to 7 and the tide would have changed the way it has, I would not have believed it. LSU was fired up. Washington just couldn't do anything right and LSU was physically beating them to death. And as it is right now, they've evened this game out completely. They've almost evened it out on the scoreboard, but more importantly, they've gotten back in the ball game, and I think they've stunned the crowd and stunned LSU's team. 
Well, this is a critical time for LSU now because now you'll see if they're maturing as a ball club because the one thing you can't let happen to you is let yourself down after a big break against you, such as a fumble putt, the, the corner that should have been intercepted and getting seven points. They're ahead by three points. They've got to come back, play the offensive kind of football that they did so far, and move the ball, score, and let the defense play again. All right, the analysis of Burt Jones and Doug Morrow, two greats here in Tigertown in their younger days. And now adding their analysis and expertise to the telecast of tonight's ball game. This is Wayne Mack, along with the guys having a good time. It's a beautiful night for football, and there's no better place to watch it than right here in Baton Rouge and Tigertown. Jeff Jagger will kick off. And who do we have deep? James and Jefferson. And James is going to down it five yards deep wisely. And Jefferson says, let's not mess with that one. Put it down there and let's start on the 20. So Jeff Wickersham goes out. Mike Gambrell, the center, the captain who earned the starting job back from Campbell. He graded, graded up and is back starting at center. Jeff Gambrell from slide out. Wickersham, the pride and joy of Merritt Island, Florida, goes out now to tell the boys what they're going to do. Eric Martin and Fontenot are the wideouts. And Wickersham looks right all the way. Hilliard gets a call and drops the ball as he is hit hard by J.C. Pearson. Pretty good collision there, gents. Second and 10 now. Minute and 48 to go in the first quarter. The Tigers leading Washington's Huskies by a score of 10 to 7. Yes, it was. And it shows that LSU is going to try to take advantage of the short passing game. Now it's Fontenot and Martin, or Durrell and Martin. High formation this time. Hilliard blocked by Lang. A beautiful block by Lang. Springs Hilliard. Away we go. Five yards. And that was a great run. Just a power sweep. That's a play. That's one of the base plays in LSU's offense. Here you see the previous play. Here it comes. A pitch from Wickersham to Hilliard. He cuts behind Lang's block here back to the left, and he got a great lead block. Came all the way back. Now Eric Martin is trying to catch up with him to throw a block. Robert Leapart, though, just runs Hilliard down, but a great run by Hilliard. Oh, what a play. 65 yards. Gary James in the ball game. Crashes off the right side, gets inside the 15. Well, that stunned him. Fred Small made the hit. Linebacker on the weak side. 222-pound junior for the Huskies of Washington. Oh, what a run. That Dalton Hilliard. He was looking for more gas, too, wasn't he? He wished he had an afterburner he could have turned on there. He, was, he, was, he, he ran at an angle. He really was, but he's been hurt for the last two weeks and hadn't had an opportunity to work out. And because of it, you can get tired in a hurry. Uh, that's a good point. Second and eight. James. Cuts inside the 10. High. Oh, to the goal. Leapheart finally stopped him. for anything anyone may have said bad about in the last two weeks. He is absolutely crushing people on his blocks. Here you see a pitch to James, finds the crack, picks those legs up again. Leapheart comes over and makes a tackle from behind. And Junius Durrell making a good block downfield. Gary James from Gretna, Louisiana. What a run. Touchdown. Straight ahead. Tigers are back. shows that they are maturing as a ball club together. Age is coming of age, as they say. Well, you know, here's H uh, Hilliard who gallops 65 yards. James comes in and cracks off the uh, right tackle down to the goal line that shows these two guys a tandem of one-two and the power and the speed and the strength and the character of these guys. And, how they, and how they complement each other. All right, Batonzo's for the kick. Die high and good. 17 to 7. 
the Tigers lead in a power packed first quarter with 20 seconds to go. Jeff Wickersham took it in on the sneak. 6'5 and 6'3 and 205. He's got the power. And the Tigers lead 17 to 7 with 20 seconds to go. And it's Danny Green and Ron Jackson. Green number 80. Jackson number 25 for Washington. Wow, what a first quarter. This is a fun way to watch it, isn't it? Woo! You know, the gratifying thing about that drive, LSU did it just with their base offense plays. No tricks. The Conzo straight ahead kick. Green at the four. Boom. He is horse collared and bulldog. And that's Freddie Lewis. He went down and ran through the man trying to block him and tackled both his blocker and the ball carrier, then just let go of the blocker and kept with the ball carrier. 19 yard return. All right. Five plays, 80 yards, only took a minute and 35, thanks to Dalton Hilliard, who has eight carries for 90 yards and a touchdown. That's not a bad average, is it? Not a bad first quarter. He has good first quarter, <laughs> doesn't he? Hunt and Hines in the backfield for Pleur. Bang, you're it. Out of bounds. What a crushing blow. Dubrock. Roussel is in for Barbe at nose guard. And we've got a penalty, and I think they're going to call unnecessary roughness. Yep. I'm not sure that was a real good call because he didn't know he was out of bounds. Ricky Chapman is in. Stovall is arguing. But it'll be a losing argument. Here we go. We'll see it right. Maybe not. You can tell. They can make them. They can call a conference and change it. See, he's running up the sidelines, and he hit him right on the tape. So that's a pretty tough call. That was a pretty tough hit, too. I think you're right, though. After all, he had just uh, uh, walked up the sideline. He had been walking a tightrope successfully. Barely escaped going out of bounds about five yards up the field. Referee John Cook, A.C. Lambert Jr. is the umpire. Well, and they decided it's uh, a late hit. That's absolutely right. If, if you're going to call the penalty on Chapman for the late hit, you've got to call delay of game on the receiver for continuing to run down the sidelines after the whistle was blown. Very unfair call by the official. I'm sure made it with all good intention, but still not a very good call. I believe I'd go to the commissioner on that one. Steve Pelour hears a lot of noise down there. Gives the ball to Hunt, the fullback, and Chapman meets him head on. And another flag. We've got another uh, flag on this one. We have a flag, and let's see what that is, and we'll take a break. We've reached the end of the quarter here, but we'll wait and see what the flag. It's a face mask call coming up, so let's let's take a break. We've reached the end of the first quarter, a power-packed episode. Indeed, the Tigers lead 17 to 7 back in a moment. his second team flanker who has caught a lot of balls he caught nine going into this ball game gentlemen tell them about the face mask and what we've had here so far well we've had an advancement for Washington and it's strictly from penalties they've had two penalties 15 yards and five yards for a face mask and that's, they've moved the ball but that's the way they've done it with the help of the refs 
And they also had an unusual thing. The quarter ended on the penalty, so they assessed the penalty. They kept the teams going in the same direction. They ran the next play with no time on the clock. And now they're taking another timeout for a change of the quarter from first to second quarter, moving the ball back where it goes, going the other way. Well, the referee is John Cook. The umpire is A.C. Lambert, Jr. The linesman is Joe Curtis. The line judge, Joe Richard. Lorian Stapp is a field judge. Billy T is the back judge. And the clock operator, John Buoni. Now, we'll watch the play where the penalty was called. Chapman came up and made the tackle, and that was not a face mask there. If the official said that his hand touched the face mask somewhere, I don't know where it did. It was a good, solid, straight-on tackle. That's two plays in a row that the penalty was called on Chapman, and I think he didn't get a very good shake either time, Bert. Well, that's hard to say. We had a bad view of it. The worst thing about it, it really had no bearing on the play. The player was down. It, it didn't twist his neck, and I'm one to speak about necks, but in other words, it really didn't adversely affect the ball player that much. Chapman came to the sideline briefly during the timeout, and the coach uh, Stovall talked to him, and he's back in there saying, all right, don't let it get you. Here we go. Hello. Hits back to Hines, hit hard. Knocked down. Boy, those Tigers are pumped up on defense. Sean Burks made the hit. Well, you know something you're seeing tonight that you haven't seen the first two games. LSU's linebackers and secondary are coming up on that running play. Rather than waiting in the defensive backfield and taking on the blocks there, they're coming up and attacking the offensive lineman. That makes all the difference in the world as far as your pursuit. Sean Burks with a good hit. One of the many prides of Baton Rouge on this LSU team. Second and eight. Patterson in motion. Halloer looking, rolling. And he found his man, Patterson, down at the 27-yard line, and he caught it. A 13-yard pickup. What happened there on the coverage, man? Well, that was just a good pass pattern. He had plenty of time to throw. When you have that much time to throw outside the perimeter, as you see, he is an experienced quarterback, and he can throw the ball. Watch him. He's just sitting out here looking for a man, finally finds him, says, okay, time to get it. Gets and him he, on the sideline. He had Hines uh, clearing out the area, too, so they had to watch for a short pass to him. Now he has twin sets to the left. He gives the ball to Hines. He runs to the right, and there's Barbe and a whole bunch to meet him. Roland Barbe, sophomore nose guard, playing tough. Dubrock, who checked out, comes back on now. Barbe. One unusual thing out. about them is that Glor will hand off with two hands, which really makes it look almost unnatural. And I don't know why he hasn't had a few fumbles because it seems like he's always a little bit behind the ball player. So let's see if that has some kind of effect to it. Stransky and Patterson of the wideouts. Motion now from Patterson. Split backs this time. The blitz. blitz is on. He eludes it temporarily. Hot from behind inside the 25. And a flag down in the backfield. And it's Clark and DeWitt. And that's got to be holding here on this play. LSU with the blitz. And looked like they were going to get to Pelour behind the line of scrimmage, but didn't get to him. And sometimes that's because some offensive lineman reached out and grabbed the hold of a jersey. Well, let's hope okay. that's it. Let's don't speak too soon. The way this drive has gone, seems like everything's been advanced on a penalty. So let's just hope. Looks like they're talking to LSU, so... And Washington is backing up the field. That, you can always tell when they start backing up who it's against. Isn't that right? And the guy that puts his head down and goes and stands off to the side, you know he's the one that did it. Well, one good thing about it, they don't have live mics on the field here, and they don't go holding number 61 that you can hear in Tiger Stadium. You wouldn't hear it here anyhow. All right, the Tigers going to their nickel defense now. Dubrock checks out, and Jefferson in that's just as well because his mother probably back in washington never hears of his son in the offensive line except when he holds that's a terrible way to be recognized isn't it it sure is norman jefferson who's a great athlete a freshman from marrero comes in he's getting more and more playing time he is in and dewitt is still in for jeffrey dale who was taken out when he was shaken up now we've got a second and 25 for washington and steve fuller drops back He's got a man open, and it's his tight end again, Michaels, and he gets lumbers down to the 27-yard line, which I think is where it all started, and Mike DeWitt ran him out. And when I tell you what, what, Florida, what Washington has done, 
those two times, that's the same pattern that Weichel was open on the earlier drive when he was wide open. They take their fullback and they'll stick him up in a slot between the tackle and the tight end. They'll split out the tight end about two or three yards, just flex him a little bit. And that puts added pass coverage responsibility on the secondary, and they're just not picking up the right man on the crossing pattern. The man's supposed to pick up the tight end to stay in there to pick up the fullback and not covering it. Toby Caston, the freshman from Monroe, checks in now. Third and nine, big play. Here comes the play. Here they come, and there he rolls. He's chased. Kalur can run. He's 6'3", big guy, caught from behind, out of bounds. Big run. Well, Chapman finally caught him, but he picked up eight yards. Now let's see how much they have to go. They're short of that first down. They sent it in the field goal team. And guys, I tell you, for all the penalties that have been called on this drive, there are some that have not been called. Watch, you'll see Pelour comes back and he rolls to the left. Hines is going to be downfield trying to, <laughs> trying to block someone, just grabbing on their jersey. You missed the end of it, but he had to hold a hold of Ricky Chapman's jersey for two or three seconds before Chapman got away from it. And Chapman made the play to prevent the first down, a 35-yard field goal attempt by Jager, and it is no good! Tigers have held with 12.58 to go in the second quarter, leading 17-7. And the Tiger defense answered the challenge, and Chapman, his determination, even though he was held, was able to grab Pelour before he could get that first down and force him out of bounds. Wickersham now has had his instructions. What do you think they told Jeff? Keep pouring it on. Don't <laughs> let up now. You know like the only thing that's gone is the first quarter. 17 to seven, pitch back, James, right side, up the side. 13 yards, Albrecht knocks him out of bounds. And we got a Tiger down, Herman Fontenot's down on the field. He was downfield leading on that attack. Mitch Andrews made an excellent block at the point of attack and Fontenot was down trying to keep the defensive back away from James. I don't know if he got kicked in the face or something. It was difficult to tell because it was right at the end of the play as his back was leaving him that it looked like uh, he became injured. Five carries for 35 yards for James. Hilliard has 90 yards in eight carries and a touchdown. Wickersham has a touchdown on a sneak. And more important than anything, Herman's up, walking around. It wasn't his wheels. Here you see the replay. Gary James coming to the outside. Craig Ratchin coming up, making a block on the outside. There you see Herman Fontenot. He looks like he just hit himself in the stomach, or the defensive back did when he fell down right there. Ratchin now is a, is a setback as James goes in motion. It comes back where he started and hurries up field, and Wickersham is looking for him, and he overthrows Martin. It's better to overthrow one on the outside than it is the underthrow one. Three of eight for 41 yards as uh, that is one, two, three consecutive, uh, four, four consecutive uh, incompletions for Wickersham. That's all right. Don't remind him because he's doing a fine job so far. I'm reminding you, you and Doug Morrow. Well, I used to throw a hundred of them at the same right. They never threw an out of bounds pass that well. Motion now. Draw. Well, they smelled it out pretty good. Well, really, had the blockers just gone ahead and moved on and pressed on, we probably would have had some running room. They were standing in, in Raskin's way on that one play, and he was trying to get out of the pack, but eventually a Washington tackler came up and made the play on it. Was... Fontenot comes back in the game. Jimmy Bowman was a flanker in motion. He had come in for Fontenot. Now they've got a third and five. Twin sets to the top of your screen. Now motion brings Fontenot down. Wickersham drops. He's got some time. Dumps it off to James. Look at that little guy go. Boom. Lee Park finally runs him out of bounds. The fans want a flag for a late hit. 15 yards for James. And Lee Park's a tough cookie. Here you see the screen to the left. Wickersham drops back. He sells the screen pretty well. Clint Berry just buried his man. His name's appropriate. And James with a good cut to the inside. 
and simply outruns the secondary. And boy, he takes that lick, I believe, out of bounds. He did take a lick out of bounds, no doubt about it. But he comes back for more, this time on the right side. To the 40. Joe Kelly brings him down after nine. Gary James and Dalton Hilliard each week seem to impress me more and more. Gary James just hit that crack, blowing and going, and he picked up nine yards all on his own. Second and one. 11.28 to go, second quarter, 17 to 7. The Tigers of LSU lead the Huskies of Washington. We're in Tiger Town. The stadium is jam packed. Rastian is the fullback. James in motion. Twin sets to the top of your screen. Rastian, quick hitter to the 35. Well, that gives them a fresh start, first and 10. Well, that offensive line is blowing off there, Jim. I say, that's a pretty good play when you just run right at them and pick up five yards against a good football team with a strong interior, uh, three-man interior. All Letterman coming back, all starters. And that's supposed to be the strength of that team. And LSU ran right at it and just ran them out of the ballpark. They're not a big defensive line. Madsen's 252, Browning 245, and Holmes 245. Wickersham pumps twice. Goes deep. Good play. Good effort, gents, all the way around. It really was. And the only thing that didn't enable that play to work was the fact that Burrell just didn't get around that defensive man. He had him faked out. Had him faked out so much he was standing flat-footed, and he just, he literally had to run over him to get past him. Well, Leapheart, number 24, has been a very busy guy tonight. Woo! He's tough on the run, and he plays good defense against the pass. And there again, he showed that he does have speed. Now it's Eric Martin to the top of your screen. And Fontenot goes in motion. And it's James to the 30. I tell you, James is looking more and more like Crazy Legs Hirsch. His knees go in two or three different directions at once. His hips are twirling. His, his feet are chomping. Well, see, Wayne, there are a few of us up here that are going to say, who is Crazy Legs Hirsch? Yeah. What did he look like? I guess you're right. Fortunately, I went to Los Angeles last year and had an opportunity to see some old film of them. Uh, Crazy Something Legs? you probably can relate to. Old film. Yeah, you're right. Charlie Chaplin and Crazy Legs Hirsch. Third and five. James says, well, they're going to go back this way. Wickersham dropped way back. Look. Good shot. Hot. Pound to the 10. Eric Martin. And Wickersham throws a strike. 22 yards. And this week, they're beginning to do a lot of different things. You haven't seen us to swear in to Eric Martin this year. All you've seen are the outside patterns, the short outs, the hooks, and things like that. They're mixing it up. They're bringing in a couple of combination patterns where they hook the back up. Then Martin to the inside, and there you see it is successful when worked right. First down on the nine. James head down is hit hard. He runs into a wall at the six yard line. Tough run. Second down at the six. Krakowski again on the hit. He's tough too. He's a very busy, strong side linebacker at 6'2, 235. He and Leaphart and Kelly, they come to play. And that was a great hit because James had the seam. And it was wide open in front of him. Krakowski came up at the last second and just stood up, James. Stopped him for no gain from the point of attack. He was a tough inside linebacker. Fans shouting. They want more. So do the Tigers. Wickersham looks left. He's got time. He's chased now. Uh-oh. Sock time at the 15. Ten-yard loss. Tony Lewis. Defensive tackle chasing him down. Well, what did he do there, Bert? Did take a little just too much time looking off to the left, nobody open? Well, I'm not sure he was sure. Well, I know he wasn't sure exactly where he wanted to go with the ball, probably because they were covered. The only problem I have with him on that play is that he probably should have just thrown the ball up in the stands. If anything, going forward after he decided he couldn't get rid of him. There was a hot dog vendor in the third row. Would have liked to have had that one. All right. Fumble. Suddenly things are going backwards. Fontenot has a shot. If he can turn the corner, 
Gets down to the 20. What an effort. They lost six yards on the play, but thanks to Herman Fontenot, otherwise it would have been 26. Well, that's a great effort by Fontenot, but Jeff did something I, I think in retrospect he wouldn't want to do again. He had the ball in one hand, and rather than tuck it up when he got hit, he tried to flip it behind his back. Fontenot had to pick it up off of the ground, and I'm sure that uh, Jeff Wickersham's going to get some conversation from Jerry Stovall about that, and I think he probably learned his lesson by doing it that one time. 37-yard field goal attempt by Batonzo, so from a first and nine, the Tigers go to a fourth and 20. 37-yard attempt. The ball is down. The kick is up and no good. A dying quail off to the right, and the Tigers stutter and stop. Well, really, on that last play that he went to Fontenot, it was a reverse. He was just trying to get the ball to the man that originally was supposed to carry the ball. As you see, here he is. He's down. He's trying to see. There's yeah. the reverse man. No, it's not. Or oh, yes, it is. Yep. He's coming around. He wouldn't be back there unless he was trying to get the ball. And he makes an uh, excellent effort just getting back to the almost the line of scrimmage and getting them in position to try to kick a field goal. It was Madsen, the defensive end, who grabbed him. Six minutes, 13 plays in the drive, and two rolls and no coffee. 7-17 to go, and 17-7 to the score, Tigers. There goes Michael in motion, and Pelora drops. Wide open. That guy's pretty good at getting open, I'll tell you that, for a fellow who didn't catch a pass last year. Well, Don James has been doing a lot of things, and the one thing that I see they're doing now is they're taking advantage of the linebacker drop of LSU. All week, Jerry Stovall told them that you've got to get back, you've got to defend the pass, and they are doing that. They're getting back, but the tight end just has a little bitty delayed cross route where he comes over underneath and picks up seven and eight yards. Carl Wilson is in. Pelour is 10 of 13 for 88 yards, one interception. Patterson in motion. Ballure has Patterson wide open at the 30, and he's knocked down at the 32, 33-yard line. Caston is in there leading the charge. Toby Caston. Same type of thing. And those passes will work. It's tough to be disciplined enough to just continue with that passing game, but they will work if you just continue to use them and continue to switch your receivers on them. And what they'll also do, Wayne, is set up that longer pass. Well, thus far, they have eschewed the long pass in their offense this year. Michaels now to the right side for a strong right formation and an eye. And that's Ron Jackson. I'm interested in seeing what this penalty is here. Now, I think they might call it clip or they may call piling on. Or they may call something else. But those are the two obvious ones there. It looked a little bit late on the pile. It looked like somebody came in from behind, and once again, Washington's backing up, and that typically is a good sign for us. <laughs> Holding is the call. Well, that's a propitious time for that penalty because it takes a little bit of the air out of the Huskies' balloon. We forgot how many steps he took. Yeah, he says, wait a minute here. I forgot the ball. Now, I'm going to count them this time. 13, 14, 18, 22. That's what I used to always walk with the referee and tell him when it was against us. And one time it worked. We All right. 17 yards instead of 15. <laughs> first down on the 20. I mean, first down and 20 to go. The ball on the 23. Say it worked again, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Single setback and a wing. And he gets the call, and it's Hines to the 26. Now, they didn't get much out of that on the first 20. A little uh, conservative call. Five minutes and 30 seconds remaining. Three-yard pickup by Jackson. Ball on the 26 now. Tigers leading as they scored all 17 of their points in the first quarter. Drove down to the nine yard line here in the second quarter and then settled for two rolls and no coffee as they backed up. Steve Pelleur drops. Green has it and there's a flag on the play. That's another one of those passes underneath. Just a short pass to try to get the ball in the hands of a receiver and let him run a little bit with it. 
Green went an awful long way to catch that for short yardage, and it's going to be another holding penalty against the Huskies. Wow. Well, that means that the Tigers' defense must be giving that offensive line some fits then if they get called holding two consecutive plays or two out of three. And they back it up. Nope. They decline it. Well, would you have done that? I guess so, huh? Make it. No, you'd have taken the penalty, Bert? Yes, I would have taken the penalty on that because you've got five minutes left in the game. I think you can still stop them. Here you see. Made a good play on it. Limited yardage on the game. Good effort jumping over the man, not getting a penalty on us. And now you have third and 14. All right, third and 15. Pillar drops. Oh, he's got Patterson wide open, and they get the first down. And I mean, he was wide open. Alex Clark defending. Well, I tell you, Patterson did a job on Alex Clark on that Patterson. He sold Clark on the idea that he was going to run an inside pattern, and more particularly a post pattern. And Clark was running to the post to stay with him. As soon as Clark took that inside step to go to the post, Patterson cut it back to the outside. Pelour had the ball right on the money, and Bert Jones was right about not taking that penalty. And they needed 15, and they picked up 19. That's a big play. As the Huskies are down by 10, and they have plenty of time. 4.20 to go in the half. Pelour again goes to work. He rolls this time, and there's a flag being thrown. Pelour is running, and he's going to gallop out of bounds as it was DeWitt over there and Toby Caston. But the flag was thrown early as that play developed. They might call that a chop block. That's a design rollout play. Don James got that from the old Paul Brown system, I think, which his brother played for the Cleveland Browns a number of years, where they'd drop back where they felt the pass rush or a blitz were coming, and then all of a sudden they'd take the fifth step, and then they'd wheel it around and run to the outside, and it gives them a good opportunity to get outside the perimeter and have plenty of time to throw. And when they do that, they have one designated hitter to chop the end. That means block him into the inside of the line and let him come inside. Well, that was a good explanation of the chop block, but the penalty was holding. Well, I, I wish it had been the chop block, don't let's, you, Doug? Let's watch it right here. You see how they block all the way down? Yep. And the back comes in, blocks the outside man just in. They can call it holding, they can call it chopping. I don't know what they can call it, but... It was out of position and they got the penalty. I could see it. Five yard penalty, first and 15. Uh -oh. Blitz, Lewis, he caught it. Wow, they beat the blitz as Robinson caught the pass. Lewis was shooting the gap and Jefferson made the hit. 14 yard pickup, they needed 15. What do you think of that play beating the blitz? Well, that's one of the right plays to do it if the quarterback has a chance to get rid of the ball. If he doesn't see the blitzer coming, it's another thing. But Pelour saw him, had a chance to dump the ball because Robinson was looking for it quickly enough. But it's a it's a pretty close situation. They almost got him that time. So they picked up 19 and 14 on consecutive pass plays. And there's DeFeo, the fullback, going off right guard and tackle, picking up the first down. And it's John Fritchie making the hit. Fritchie from Baton Rouge. Pelour has 13 completions in a row. This guy gets in a groove, doesn't he? He sure does. They, they have a lot all of been... short passes, does a lot of the things just right. So he had uh, 15 in a row last week. He has 13 in a row now. Burt Jones, I believe you hit, what, 17 in a row one time? Or... That was a long time ago. Pelour wants a lot this time, and he's got Patterson, and he dropped the ball. Made a good play on that one. Clark got his hand in there, evidently. It was a perfectly thrown ball. At least I think it was. What do you guys think? I think it was as perfect as you can throw it. The ball was right there on the money, and Patterson had about a half step on Clark, and Clark made a dive right at the end of the play. We couldn't tell from here whether he got his hand on it or not, but it looked like he did. Here you're going to see it from ground level. Pelour laid the ball out just perfectly, and they got that single coverage, and Clark just reached up, and I think he batted the ball down to the ground. Second and 10, Pelour is going to the air again. He's being chased this time. Barbe's after him, Kiddick is after him, and he goes out of bounds. And another flag. Eric Kiddick may get called for getting him after he got out of bounds. 
No. No? I don't believe. I think it might have been another clip. I think you're right. I think I just saw the official motion clip down there. Either that or he was dusting off his britches. Knickers. Those are knickers they wear down yeah, there. Knickers. Well, I'll tell you, the penalties have hurt the Huskers. 2.45 remaining here in the second quarter. They've been called for holding twice, a clip. 17 to 7 Tigers lead, and that lady is viewing with alarm the <laughs> incident you think on the she field. She knows what a clip is. <laughs> no, but she knows when she's on camera. All right. You know, sometimes when you hold and you clip and you do all this stuff regularly, that's the reason you have good pass protection. <laughs> which may be why Pelour has so much time to throw the ball. The clip is the call from referee John Cook. Moves the ball clear back to the Washington 40-yard line. They've gained about 700 yards on this drive so far. <laughs> <laughs> they're still in their own backyard with a second and 32. But they're dangerous in these long yardage situations as they've evidenced. This time they're picking up the charge. Pelora throws out of bounds. Lance Dodson, the right tackle for Washington, is 6'4 and 280, a senior. And I see his number down there quite a bit. He's doing a pretty good job, number 70. Yeah, and there you see a freshman, Ola Jefferson, who made an extremely fine play there. But he forgot the penalty. He thought it was fourth down. He went to get the punt. Third and 32. Hold him, Tiger. Look at the tight end. Deep, deep, deep to Patterson again. And did he hang on? He did! Fantastic catch! Wayne, I don't believe that he did! The ball bounced on the ground! It appeared that it did the hit ball the ground! bounced on the ground! Everybody else in the stadium saw it bounce on the ground, but the official who made the call. Here you see Pelour go back. He laid the ball out perfectly for Patterson. Patterson dove for it, had it momentarily, hit the ground, bounced up, and then he caught it coming out, and now they're calling it back. They're calling it back! Now the official who... Who saw it from the middle of the field came over and fortunately had the integrity to point out that it had hit the ground and bounced up off the ground. We might point out that any official can overrule any other official if he thinks he had a better view of the situation. And that is, when you use the word integrity in there, that's exactly what you're using. Well, you see it goes down, falls right on the ball, bounces up. Keeps his eye on the ball all the time as good receivers are doing. Pulls it in. I'll give him credit for keeping his eye on the ball. Fourth and 32. Remember, their punting average is 29 yards. Zimmerman standing on his 25. They're playing him short. They're looking for a wedge shot. It's high. That's what it is. It's a sand wedge. Gathered in on the 37 by Hobley, and the Tigers are in business. No backspin. A 23-yard punt, no backspin. <laughs> oh, brother, what a, that must make Don James' hair turn gray every time they have to punt the football. You know, Doug, you were an old kicker. You remember when you were practicing and you felt like you hit it off your knee? <laughs> That's Not only in like. practice. <laughs> Two minutes and 18 seconds. Will the Tigers think offensively here? They have... Rathjen in along with uh, Lang. I think, no, that's James, excuse me. Dumps it off. There he's going. Here he goes to the 45. That's the Tiger offense from 1982. That's it. That's what we've talked about for two games. Up until this game, we had talked an awful lot, and Burton was not with us last year, Wayne, and didn't have a chance to see how diversified they were. LSU has really expanded their offense this week and they've used a lot of things which have made them an exciting offensive football team. First and 10. James gets the call again. This time a good play behind the line as he's knocked down by Ron Holmes who penetrated and hit him at the ankles. Well, that's not fair. He stopped the momentum. That's pretty good defensive play right there to, yep. to run through your blocker and catch him from behind and trip him up with one hand. Second and 11, Fontenot comes in with a play. Clock is ticking, minute 36 to go in the half, 17 to seven Tigers. They need a little real estate here. Move that football. Lang and James in the backfield. 
Wickersham looks to the right. It's Eric Martin to the 26. 19 yards, and Wickersham is throwing fastball. And that's the good pass to throw against that Washington trying to play a little prevent defense or three deep defense. Here you're going to see Wickersham come back, and Martin is coming down and hooking right in front of the camera, right in that spot in front of the cornerback behind the linebacker. He made the catch and had plenty of cushion after he made the catch. And we'll take a timeout with a score 17 to 7, a minute 11 to go back in a moment. Back in action in Tiger Town. James is in. I don't think Hilliard's played since that 65 yard run. James is lined up on a wing to the left with two wide outs and Fontenot in motion topside. Here comes James around and he's hit and hit hard. And it's Krakowski, Joe Krakowski, who came up and penetrated and slowed him down. Well, what do you think, man? What are you going to do? Well, here? I think you can go to the well one too many times. The second time he can't land up on the wing. First time he ran that kind of buck sweep, reverse. He did it again. They were ready for it that time. 41 seconds. Look at Shem. Pressure's on. Pass is deflected. No good. Wow. Corral made a good, good diving effort. 31 seconds remaining. It's third and five on the 21. Well, they were down to the nine before and backed up to the 20. And missed the field goal. This is another scoring opportunity and a 10 point lead is not a lot against a team that can pass the ball the way the Huskies can pass it. The Tigers need something here. 31 seconds to go. Third and five on the 21. Wickersham brings them out. They have one time out. They've got to get out of a play quick if they make a completion for a first. Lang and James. James is on the wing. The line gives him time. Incomplete. He had him. He had Martin on that slant and threw her low and incomplete. And now we have fourth down. Ball on the 21. It'll be a 38-yard field goal attempt by Batanzos. What would you think of that play, gents? I, I like it. I, it's a delay pattern underneath. Martin came down. He, uh, James went down and hooked about 15 yards, and Martin went down and came up underneath him. The ball's got to be thrown well enough. I think that was thrown well enough for him to catch, but you got to make those tough catches, too. All right. 38-yard attempt by Batanzos. The kick is up, and it is good. Let's take a break with 20 seconds remaining. 27, the Tigers back in a moment. ball kickoff by Batanzos and it's gathered in by Jacques Robinson at the 35 
Why do you think they use that kickoff on this play with uh, 16 seconds remaining? Well, Hoping remember, they remember the Florida State game last year? Right before the end of the first half, they did the same thing. They really, if, if Washington gets the ball in good field position, they don't have enough time to do anything with it. If they fumble the sky kick and LSU recovers it, they've got it in excellent position to try one play and then go for a field goal or, or go for a field goal immediately. All right. Actually, it looked almost like an onside kick effort there. It wasn't really a 2 2 high sky kick, and it almost hit the ground before he caught it. Steve Pillar drops, rolls, throws it deep, and it ought to be intercepted. And it isn't. Well, I shouldn't say ought to be. Well, I will say that it might have been. It was Clark over there along with Hobley. They had good coverage. And Pelour just addressed that one uh, to whom it may concern. Well, that's a good job if he makes the catch, which he almost did. He had a player around the football there. He also had two Tigers around it. Always a chance for a little pass interference call. And that took 11 seconds off the clock. So the Tigers with a 20 to 7 lead. 17 of those points in the first quarter. They've played a good tough game on both sides of the ball and the Huskies are going to run it and they'll go to the locker room trailing by 13. All right, the crowd likes it. As you can hear, the sellout crowd here in Tiger Stadium in Baton Rouge. Bert, what do you think? I think the Tigers are playing LSU football, as they say, leading 20 to 7 at the half. They came out utilizing the short passing game and it's worked. It's worked very well for them. They've thrown combination pass patterns to the outside receivers. Jeff Wickersham has got a good feel of, his, of the way he feels underneath the center, and he's doing a good job. You can see defense. They're playing with a little more enthusiasm, getting up, and they're rolling with it. And looking at the other side of the coin, LSU has had scoring opportunities that they have missed. They easily could have had two more touchdowns than they have right now and, and really the game could have been a walk away at this point if the Tigers had been able to convert a couple of things. LSU has not punted in the ball game so that shows you how they've been moving the football and as you pointed out they had a first down on the nine and failed to capitalize and they had another first down deep and had to settle for three. So now we're ready to go as the Tigers will receive the kickoff from Jagger for Washington. Good kick. James drops it and downs it. And the Tigers will put the ball in play first and 10 on the 20. Hilliard carried eight times for 90 yards. James 10 times for 57. Wickersham is 7 of 15 for 113 yards. And Hilliard is back in. We were talking at halftime, Wayne, about whether he had been injured or if he just got tired when that, he made the 65-yard run. He's back in to start the second half. So if he got hurt, he got well fast. I assume that he got tired. Martin caught three for 57, Fontenot two for 25, and James two for 31. All right. Away we go. The Tigers with the football. Lang is the fullback. And Hilliard gets the call and slants up to the 25. Pearson makes the hit. J.C. Pearson, cornerback on the weak side. All right. Here's Dalton Hilliard. What a fine back he's turning into. Or he is. He is exciting. And James is exciting in a little different style. 205 pound James, 197 pound Hilliard. A little shift in the defensive line. Hilliard gets the call and he's smothered by Kurkowski, the linebacker. Oh, he is tough. Joe Kurkowski, he really plugs that hole, doesn't he? He certainly did on that one. And he came in there with his arms out and ready to play. Flag on the play in the in the line. LSU's left side jumped a little ahead of the count. And the official threw the flag. Washington, I imagine, would refuse the penalty and put LSU in the third down and four situation. I would imagine. We'll see. They're chatting about it. It Purple. looks like Wayne. Well, looks like Washington's adjustment on defense is that they're going to roll up into a what I call a double zone in the sense that both corners come up and attack the outside receivers and the safety play the outside. They're trying to double team the outside men because LSU's had success throwing to them. They haven't done that in the first half and now they're doing it now. Two plays in a row. All right and by the same token oh, they're sure chatting about this motion uh, penalty here by the same token uh, 
Uh, Stransky has caught three, Michael four, and Patterson four as uh, Pelur has hit the outside men too. They are refusing the the penalty, the motion penalty. So it's third and four. The Tigers. Jerry Stovall says hello to some folks in the crowd. Head coach at LSU, 19, 15, and two going into this game. Don James is 69 and 26 at Washington, 94, 45, and one overall. LSU is four of six in third down conversions. Washington is one of six. Hilliard in motion. Oh, Wickersham almost falls, regains his position and throws to Fontenot a strike. And how's that? You know, that play only gained five yards, but I think that's the greatest play of the game. <laughs> I want you to tell him why, Bert. Because it picked up five yards and they only needed four and a half. It was a combination pass route, something they haven't been doing. And here you see it. And watch it. There you go. The center stepped on Jeff Wickersham's and he made an excellent play just getting back. It can be one of the most embarrassing moments of your life. I did it against Alabama. Just fell down. First and ten. Fontenot caught only eight passes last year. He's very active this year. A new look in the offense as Dean Browning that time makes the hit. The nose guard and puts a stop on the on the Tiger. Hilliard crashed right into the middle there and picked up just about one tough yard up to the 32, just beyond the 32 yard line. It's 20 to 7. The Tigers leading early in the third quarter here with a second and nine on their own 33 yard line. Ball is between the 32 and 33. They mark it according to the advance line. Now, Lang tried to pass Christian Mississippi as the fullback at 200 pounds, and he's a good one. And Hilliard gets the call. Lang throws the block. Hilliard hits the outside, spins, and turns up to the 38. He did a 360-degree turn, but Holmes and Albritton smothered him and wrapped him up and took him to turf. He really did. And you mentioned Gene Lang. What an excellent blocker as well as a ball carrier that he is. Every time you see Hilliard and James carry that ball, you can just about bank on it that he's made the key block. And I tell you, Washington's really made some adjustments this half. They used four down linemen the last play. Their normal defense is three down, and they got four down this time. Hilliard now is 101 yards and 12 carries. Wickersham, the blitz is on. He unloads it incomplete. Well, he got rid of it anyhow, Bert. Yes, he did. Good effort on Jeff Wickersham's part. And Washington is changing it up. They're not necessarily using their getting four and five men down in three-point stands making the offensive lineman wonder who is the lineman on this play. Now in punt returns, Green is back there. He's only returned for a one and a third yard average. So he's averaging four feet per punt return, fellas. And that is not very extravagant. Here's the first punt of the night. And it's a shank job. Wow, down on the 40 yard line, it'll roll dead at about the 38 or 39. And uh, what happened to Clay Parker? A 23 yard kick. Is that contagious? What? The Huskies have been doing and maybe Zimmerman's disease. <laughs> he caught it from the Washington <laughs> kicker. <laughs> I think he was allowing for his shoe and he forgot that he took it off. <laughs> wow, a 23 yard punt. Well, maybe he's a little rusty from being on the bench all night. That's his first one. That's tough on a punter to go back and unload one 23 yard when you've had all night to crank up. All right. The Huskies with the football on the 39 yard line. Single setback, wing right, two wide outs, and Pelura drops. Over the middle, Michael is wide open again to the 46 or 7-yard line where he's upended. But once again, the tight end drifting off the line, a little delay there, and he's open. Well, LSU's dropping their linebackers so deep. Here you see Pelura come back, and Michael is just going to sift into the area on the other side of the center, and the linebackers have dropped so deep they've vacated it. Now, from LSU standpoint, they made Michael pay for that reception. He's come out with an injury. I don't know how serious, but he's out of the game. Caston put a very good hit on him, the youngster. There's Hines, and he is stopped at the line as Melanson wrapped him up along with uh, Kittick. Eric Kittick, the 250-pound junior, wrapped him up too. Good hit. As you can see, Pelour was hitting 74% of his passes coming into this ball game, and he's not doing too bad right now. That one interception was a big one. Now we have a third and eight. Tiger defense digs in. What do we have? Third and one it was. They had a mistake there on the scoreboard. Third and one and a quarterback sneak by Pelour. 
And let's see what, what happens when they unpile. That's a big job for Dan Ernesty, the center on that sneak, isn't it, Bert? When your center has to do a good job for you. It really is. I used to kind of lean on which one side or the other on the center to tell him which way I was going to come, just trying to read the slant of the defensive line. And he just has to come out, blow him off the ball, and give you the room to get the first. Do you usually run that on a quick count, a sneak? No, I really didn't, uh, primarily because you wanted to have it kind of rhythm so they could get a, just a rolling start. Just stretching that chain out there, and he got it. Well, Pelor is 6'3 and about 210 pounds, so he's got the beef. Doug Morrow and Burt Jones with the commentary. Wayne Mack with the story of the game tonight from Tiger Stadium in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. 10.50 to go in the third quarter. The Tigers leading 20 to 7 over the Huskies. The Tigers lost to Florida State, defeated Rice. The Huskies beat Northwestern and Michigan. Fans here giving vocal support. Hunt in motion. Pelur falls down. That's it. In college ranks, you don't have to be touched. Once your knee hits the ground, that's it. School's out, and he loses eight yards. It's a good thing for LSU, too, because Troy Roden is the tight end. He was wide open downfield. Now, if Pelur had thrown the ball to him, LSU may have had a chance to get someone closer to him by the time the ball got there. But he was absolutely wide open, about 17 or 18 yards downfield at the time that Pelur went to the ground. Whose primary responsibility is a, is a tight end? Depends on the defense. It can go to a lot of different people. All right. Second and 18. Single setback. Draw play gets, whoa, he's working hard. Up to about the 44, Jeffrey Dale comes up to help stuff it along with uh, Clarence Osborne, the freshman. But that was uh, some hard running by Allen, John Allen. It sure was because it looks like he stopped right here to the line of scrimmage. But no, it slips that tackle, moves it on up, and as you see, a lot of purple jerseys coming into play here. It looks like a clip right there, too. Boom. Eric Kittick thought he was hit late and in the back. Third and 15. Barbe is on the center's nose. Pelura drops. Here they come, shooting the gap. He gets rid of it, and a flag is thrown. Jeffrey Dale defending. And once again, it was a tight end, Tony Roten. This is going to be interesting because the flag was thrown in the secondary. All that was was a pick play, which is a, a commonly used play. Every team has it. And I thought Washington executed it very well that time. I don't know if that's what the penalty is. It's, it's loss of down, which they, they don't like, I believe. I think it's an official signal loss of down. Well, the pick play is illegal, but you don't see it called very often by the officials. Well, it, it's illegal to run a pick play. However, if you cross receivers and you're not trying to pick somebody, that's okay. And so if you run one but make it look like the other, they're not going to call it on you. So it comes down to the judgment of the official. And that is what they called it on, I believe. They, that's what it is, is offensive pass interference. Which is a loss of down and moves them back to a fourth down and 30 yards to go, and in comes the punter. And I'm sure Don James has his heart in his mouth, the coach over there, because their punting game has been ineffective this year, averaging less than 30 yards a punt. And the last one was a 23-yarder. Norman Jefferson's only standing a little over 30 yards from the line of scrimmage. He's expecting a short kick also. Zimmerman is standing on his 15, waiting for the snap. It is short. And gathered in at about the 43 yard line by Hobley, a 28 yard punt. Well, don't blame Zimmerman. This is Thane Cleland, another kicker. Oh, <laughs> he and Zimmerman have combined to average about 29 yards a kick this year, and he just brought the average down if you can do that. Well, I'm sure James is looking for somebody who can punt the football. He might have a, a tryout like, uh, like they do in the pros. Well, that's how Roger Carr started out punting on the tryout. 
All right, Wickersham gives it to James. He's trying to find some place to go out the side door, but he can't. Good pursuit along the line, and Vince Albritton, and the strong safety, ran him out of bounds. That little boy's enjoying the game, isn't he? Say, hey, Mom. <laughs> Say, why are all these people here? What's going on out there? He says, go, Tiger. This is the best place I know to come get some popcorn, peanuts, hot dogs, and Coca-Cola. Well, the fans are enjoying it tonight with a 20 to 7 Tiger lead with 8.44 to go in the third quarter. A lot of fans watching the football game live. Lang is a setback and uh, James is a wing and there he goes around the left side on that inside handoff and they drop him at about the Tiger 48 yard line. Uh, they were not fooled too much by that play. Just some hard running by James. Picked up a little yardage. About five, really. We have a player down. Washington Husky down on the play. As James is getting some pretty good work out tonight. He has uh, 12 carries for 64 yards. Dalton Hilliard has 12 carries for 101 yards. So uh, that's boys have divided the uh, workload evenly tonight. Joe Kelly is a player that's shaken up on the play and he's leaving the scene of the action. And he's one of those tough inside linebackers for the Huskies. I don't know how much depth they have at that spot, but he certainly has been prominent tonight. Well, Al James, number 32, is listed as his backup. Yeah, Kelly and Kurkowski are a couple of headhunters. bother the other team a little bit third and five I'll tell you what would bother him even more a five yard pickup by Jeff Wickersham here as he sends his wide outs top and bottom of your screen and Lang is a fullback James is a tailback in motion from Fontenot and James gets the call trying to turn the corner and he does Chased out by Pearsons and Albritton. What's that attendance figure? Can you believe a new stadium record? 82,390 tonight, breaking by almost 3,000 the stadium record for the Florida State game two weeks ago. 82,390. James gets the call and he's caught behind the line of scrimmage. A good play. And that is Lynn Madsen, the right tackle, who made the play. Good penetration. About, about five of that crowd was in there to tackle Gary James behind the line of scrimmage. <laughs> it sure did. 81,000 of them shut up in a hurry. <laughs> Second and 15 now, 7.45 to go in the third quarter. The Tigers lead 20 to 7. Florida next week, big game. Back to the eye formation. Fountain no motion a little bit. Wickersham falls down and covers the ball. He didn't fall down. That's the second or the he's third time again. the center or the guard has stepped on his foot. And that's something that he's going to have to contend with. They're going to have to talk about this. They're going to have to get the man up on the line of scrimmage, or he's going to have to put his feet further away from the center. Well, now, when you have a quarterback with big feet, I don't know what size Wickersham wears, but there have been quarterbacks who wore like a 14 and a half shoe. I don't know. Doug, did you know that? Somebody has a foot that big? That Honest, a quarterback, too. I can expect that of a tackle, but not a quarterback. I don't know who y'all are talking about. Third, <laughs> third and 18, and it's wide to that 14 and a half. Wickersham drops quickly. Look. What a shot. Oh, wide open. Eric Martin. That shows you why I think he's going to be as fine a quarterback as ever played for LSU. Right there. What a pass he threw on that one. Third and long, and here he comes up with a corner pattern, and he threw a frozen rope right here for 23 yards. Boom, out of that cannon for an arm. And Eric Martin says, thank you, I'll take it right there. Well, that woke up that 82,000 again. Hey, here's a pitch back to James. Good block by Lang, cuts inside, gets to the 17. Well, the Huskies are feeling the pressure now as the Tigers are applying it here. Second and one, a nine-yard pickup. Eric James just gets outside, spreads the defense out, and when he feels right, 
he cuts it up, and I mean he cuts it up. 15 carries for 74 yards for James. That is Ron Holmes, a starting tackle, leaving the field for Washington. The defensive line shifts. Wickersham gives it to James. This time he goes left, head down, gets inside the 15, but very good pursuit. And it's Stuart Hill and Joe Kelly. Hill is a strong side linebacker, and Kelly comes over from the weak side to help. That's another LSU first down. First and 10 on the 14. LSU's really kind of settled their offense down and gone to a basic running game this half, but they've controlled it well this drive. Martin to the short side of the field. James to the wide side of the field. Hurdles inside the 10. Leaphart made the stop, but Gary James hurdles the last three or four yards. Picked up six. Now here's, here you're going to see James in the eye back position. He takes the pitch. And he's just going to find the seam, and he gets pretty good blocking, but more than anything, he made the run by himself by jumping over, and there's Joe Leapard over to make the tackle. 17 carries, 87 yards for James, second and four. On the eight-yard line. Junius Durrell in motion. James gets the call again. Pows inside the pile. Overpowering Washington. And that's just exceptional blocking. They're running it from all kinds of different formations. They're running it to the weak side, to the wide side of the field, to the strong side of the formation, weak side. They're just blocking people. That's the difference tonight. First and goal from the three. Touchdown. <laughs> oh, oh, look at that one. Third touchdown of the year for Wickersham. Is that a naked reverse? You think he got him conscious of that sweep? <laughs> Boy, they were all looking for Gary James, and Jeff Wickersham went in untouched. They didn't even see him. I have to think that the Tigers had their offense under wraps the first or the second game, but not the first. <laughs> Matanzos for the kick. It's good. And the Tigers lead 27 to 7 with 4.30 to go in the third quarter. We'll be back in a moment. Seven plays, 58 yards, 4 minutes and 21 seconds. Wickersham from three yards. His second touchdown of the night. Hilliard scored from four yards. Taking on the five. Green is nailed at the 20. 15 yard return and Toby Caston, the freshman, led the charge. Seven to seven, the Tigers lead the Huskies with 4.23 to go in the third quarter. Pelour, who is an accurate passer and who brought his ball club back over Michigan last week in the fourth quarter, scoring two touchdowns in the fourth quarter, so you can't uh, wrap this one up and send it home yet. Pelour drops. Patterson's open at the 23. But I think if I were LSU, I would give him all the five-yard pass patterns and completion he wants. Let him have that because LSU is going to be able to make those receivers pay for it. Be one thing if the score is even right now, but when you're up by 20 points, make them pick them up five, six yards at a time. They may drop a few. You may knock somebody down. All right. Patterson again. And he's wrestled to the turf by Alex Clark, senior. Ten-yard pickup, first down. 
but do make them throw it inside. <laughs> don't let them complete that one if you don't if you don't have to. That's tough when you get somebody out there one on one and you make that make that cornerback cover the receiver in the open field, particularly when you have shifting ball carriers like Mark Patterson. Next week it's Florida, 82,000 plus here tonight. First and ten. What a play! Jack Robinson carried the ball, and he had no more chance in a paper shirt and a bear fight. And Jeffrey Dale back in the ball game, forcing that play. A great play by Dale. Well, the Tigers are all over the place now. They are fired up. There you see it, trying to get outside, but there's no place to go. Greg Dubrock comes in. It just says, you can't go around my side. Good to see Dubrock, who's probably over his injuries that plagued him the first couple of games. Patterson goes in motion. Valor has a man open. It's green, and he he snags it at about the 47, and Alex Clark brings him down. 16-yard pickup. You never figure this guy Pelour out of a ball game. Oh, he's tough. Well, I'll tell you, that was a that was a great pass that he threw. He threw the ball well before Green's break, and he had the ball right on the right spot when Green made his break and looked back. The ball was there to be caught because LSU had pretty good coverage downfield on him that time. 27 to 7 Tigers 242 to go in the third quarter three wideouts in the game now into the ground for green and did he catch it the official says he did at the 46 I'm not sure Jerry thinks he caught it what do you think <laughs> I think Jerry might disagree with that call I wonder what Jerry's saying right now leave me alone I know he didn't catch that ball I think he says you're picking on my young men Second and five. All right, Pelour looks down the line and somebody isn't set right or he doesn't like the defense, but he takes a snap and he's got Patterson and overthrows him. That play looked like uh, a little bit of beef stew. Well, it was a little bit of beef stew, but it was a potentially a very good play because he read LSU's blitz there. They've been tipping it in the last couple of games where they come up a little bit closer, line up to the line of scrimmage. He told his back to get up in position to block this man. I'm going to run a quick slant on both of my outside receivers, put some one-on-one. -on -one. If he catches it, it's a good chance for a touchdown. All right, good analysis by Burt Jones, Doug Morrow, along with yours truly. Just tying it together here. Once again, Pelour giving a signal and he calls a timeout. All right, let's take a break. 27 to 7, Tigers, 159 to go, third quarter, back in a moment. it tough for Pelour, no doubt. If he wanted to audibleize, I doubt if he could do it. He dropped back. Here they come. They're picked up, though. He's got time. He's hit as he throws incomplete. It was right Elma Malonso. Bang, bang. A flag is on the turf. did a pretty good job that time. Washington, I think, picked the blitz up very well. Belasso had was blocked or had a man to block him and simply ran over him and got to Pelour anyway. That, that's the type of thing that can really hurt you. Here you see Pelour goes back. Belasso's coming on the right side and simply knocks Jock Robinson down and forces Pelour to drop the ball out there a little bit early. Just a good individual effort. But he was trying to get it to the tight end, Roten, too. And he was. Minute and 51 to go, and the Huskers have to punt, and it's white knuckle time for Coach Don James with their punting average of less than 30 yards. Standing on the 39, who is it this time? 
say that's the best one of the night. Into the end zone, a 46-yard punt. And wouldn't that's you know, it. when he gets one 46 <laughs> yards, it that's goes in the end zone, doesn't stay in the field. Well, that's Thane Cleland in there, punting on that one. And he'll probably get a gold star after his name or be player of the week for Washington after that punt because their punting has been miserable. Well, when you think about it, it was 46 yards into the end zone, but when they bring it out 20, it makes it 26, and it's not that good of a punt. Yeah, but when you've been punting 28 yards, that must feel good even though it's wrong. <laughs> hey, don't tell me with that kind of an average you're going to try to finesse a punt. <laughs> I thought that's what they were doing all the way along. All right, Hilliard is a setback. Gets a call. Gets the ball. You know, he, he's running. Uh, Lee Park drives him out. He seems to be laboring a little bit, doesn't he? He seems to be a little bit. But you note here, LSU came up with a new formation that time. They had two flankers and two tight ends, both sides, and one back offense, but had Hilliard in the running back spot. They didn't keep the fullback in there. They had Hilliard in at the running back spot. Now, Curtis checks out a tight end, and Rathjen checks in. And we have a second and four. Minute and 32 to go, third quarter. Tigers lead 27 to seven over the Huskies of Washington. Hilliard to the 29. Madsen on the stop. Along with Ron Holmes. They have small defensive linemen. Heaviest, 250. Coach Jerry Stovall was hoping for 95 degree temperature and 110 degree a percentage of humidity tonight. He didn't get that. It's a beautiful night for football, but the, the Tigers are doing all right without any help from the weather. Third and one. Hilliard is the lone setback, and he gets the call for the right side. Plunges over the 30. I'll tell you, he just took a plunge for that one. He just went for the first and got it. Yep. And it's a good thing for Washington that he decided to go for the first because LSU had a pretty good seal, and if he had cut outside with a block from Fontenot, and Fontenot was in a position to do it, he may have gone a long way. Maybe he remembered the first quarter and he didn't want to get tired again, so he <laughs> just decided to go ahead and dive in there. 65-yard run would tire almost anybody out. 15 carries for 113 yards for Hilliard, 18 carries for 93 yards for James. Motion. Wickersham backpedals quickly. Sets up a screen to Hilliard, but they crack right through and break it up. And that is Ron Holmes in there to get that one. Good work by the tackle along with Joe Krakowski, the strong side linebacker. And good play there by Joe Kelly, too. He was in there to force Hilliard to make a cut before he wanted to. All right, we've reached the end of the third quarter with a score. The Tigers of LSU, 27. The Huskies of Washington, 7, back in a moment. This is the fourth quarter. Putting this into perspective, the Tigers of LSU, an uneventful victory over Rice last week. They're facing a team that's ranked ninth in one poll, seventh in another. The Tigers have them down 27 to seven as we start the fourth quarter. Is this a big game? You bet. Wickersham, second and 12 play. Throws. Oh, Martin is open again. And if he had another 15 yards for hitting out of bounds. Best D. Jackson hit him after he crossed the line after a 23-yard pickup. And to watch Jeff Wickersham throw a pass like that makes me grin from ear to ear. He can throw it, and they just need to turn him loose. Look at him go back here. And here comes that cannon he possesses on a 25-yard out. That is a final strong football. And it appeared that he was looking to his right and then came back to his left with a pass. And we might get 15 yards on top of it. Well, there they go, the long walk. The Huskies have been hurt by penalties tonight. And there was one. They picked the wrong spot for that one, right under Jerry Stovall's nose. With an official standing on both sides of it. Yep. Well, if I were Jerry now, I would sit there and throw it again. All right, let's see. The ball is on the 33-yard line of the Huskies. 
They're feeling the pressure applied by the Tigers of LSU. Six seconds into the fourth quarter, 27 to seven. First down, a shift, and what do we have, encroachment? Uh, somebody on offense moved there, but just as important, it might give them opportunity. Washington was coming up with a little bit of change there. It looked as if they were in a blitzing formation on defense, and if the uh, offensive coaches can get that into Jeff, we might have an opportunity to go with it. So when Washington shifted, they teased one of the Tigers to move. First and 15, or second and 15. Looks like they've come out of the blitz now. Booker Sham looks right, comes back. Uh-oh, help, somebody. Yes, it's part of the five. <laughs> Robert Lee Park deflected it. Cottono caught it, 33 yards. Here you see, Jeff is looking all over the field for someone. And then he finds his man down a good job throwing it to him. The receiver probably should have come back to him on that one play, but when it's going your way as it is for the Tigers tonight, you see what can happen. That's a new play put in for this week <laughs> by Jerry Stovall. Boy, Fontenot's been busy. Hilliard is racked up at the five by Dean Browning, the nose guard. Well, that was a deep hole with a dull shovel. Second down. I think, I think that's the most Washington's defense has controlled the line of scrimmage on any one play tonight. They pushed LSU's offensive line back, if anything, just stood them straight up. I would sure like to see Jeff Rickersham get a touchdown pass because that would be the only thing he needs to break for this season. In other words, get the ice flowing his way. Got a double slot to this side. Looks like pass. He's looking this way. And now he's looking at the turf, knocked down on the 15. Well, he looked to the left, and uh, the enemy came in from the right, and the person of Fred Small, the outside linebacker on that side, who cracked through, along with Dean Browning. Washington did a good job of covering. They had to switch coverage in the secondary after the snap because one of the inside men who was responsible for covering Hilliard got picked off on one of those... It's not a pick play when LSU runs it. It's a crossing pattern. It's a pick play when the other two. <laughs> All right. One of those crossing patterns, he got caught up in the middle. Third and 13. Wicker Sham has a strong left this time. Mitch Andrews a tight end. And what do we have? Somebody moved again? Looks like the shot clock, as they say, ran out on them. That's five yards. When you get down this deep, is it always man coverage? Well, typically it is, but when it's third and 20, well, it's not necessarily man coverage. Uh -huh. Well, they took too much time. You know, this is one thing that uh, Jerry Stovall will address him to, no doubt, if they don't uh, cash in this time, because this is the third time down in which uh, two other times they settle for nothing and one time for a field goal. And when you get down this way, you need, you need to go for the juggler. Get those points. All right, let's see. Jackson is the one that was called on the unsportsmanlike conduct play down here, and he's the one that was beaten on that play by Eric Martin. It is good. The Tigers are stomping the Huskies 34 to 7. We'll be back in a moment.
Jeff Wickersham is 13 of 22 for 214 yards, and he got that touchdown you wanted him to get, Bert. Too bad. 10, Ten plays, plays, 80 yards, four minutes to kick off. Green and Jackson, they'll take it on the 20. And how about that? LSU kicked it into the end zone, and they were unable to run it back. I don't know why this guy kicking. This guy can kick it. Well, the Huskies must feel by now that it's going to be a long flight back to Washington. It's a long flight, but it's a long game, and they still have 12 minutes and 40 seconds left. You sound like a coach. Well, I feel like one. Sometimes. 34 to 7. You're not going to relax yet. It's not over till it's over. <laughs> All right. Ask uh, Bo Schembechler, huh? You bet. Incomplete intended for Woten, the tight end. And it was Rydell Malonson who was Johnny on the spot. You guys notice any difference between the team this week and the one we saw the last two weeks? I can't this, believe it. Are they just different people in the same uniforms or what? Fantastic uh, effort we've seen. And you know, on top of that, the LSU's defensive package has been adjusted to stop some of the things people were successful with. And their offense has been expanded, but the effort's been tremendous. Kalur is 19 of 30, missed his last four deliveries, drops back. He's got Patterson. He's not a bad flanker, and he's off to the races. Head him off with the pass. Is that Daniel? Ready him down. That's Gene Daniel. Ready him down from behind, but an excellent job by Patterson. Patterson caught a short pass and turned it into a long pass, and those are the ones that can get a team back in the game quick. 51 yards on that one. was a fine play he just comes up starts looking for the open field gets one block downfield turns it to the outside and i'm glad mr daniel has some speed all right pelor back in action down to the 26 yard line he whooped one over there in front of dubrock and it's a tight end again he likes his tight end they're going to get the overtime leroy lutu the tight end he might be one of those Samoans. They got a lot of Samoans out there in uh, Pac-10 football. Stransky has been shut down here in the second half. Number nine, the flanker at the top of the screen. Green is at the bottom. Allure, the blitz is on. He unloads. There's a collision. Green has it. A fantastic catch and a great throw by Steve Pillar. That's the way you can beat that blitz, but you've got to have somebody to catch the ball like that, and that was a terrific catch by Green. Here you're going to see Pelur just stepping back, and he sees the blitz coming. He's going to, and it's difficult to go back the way he does and get rid of it that quickly because he went back turning to the left and had to turn back around. Why he does it? I don't know, but it certainly didn't work well for him. He got the ball out there, and a great catch by Danny Green. And Pelur sneaks it. Touchdown. Well, I'll tell you, they came back in a hurry, and the Huskies showed some character, 34 to 13, with 11:20 to go. And uh, he, what's your analysis really of him as a as a passer, as a quarterback? How do you look at him? How do you compare him? I think he's a, a real good player. I don't think he's got the raw ability that Jeff Rickersham has. He's a lot older. He's more experienced. He has a little bit better feel of the game right now, but. As far as motor skills and raw talent, I think that uh, he's not the best in the world, but he's done a fine job. All right, the kick is up and good, and it's 34 to 14. We'll be back in a moment. All right, 22 of 33 for Pelour now for 265 yards, and let's see, they're looking for the onside kick. With 11.20 to go, but they don't get it. Gathered in on the five. Gary James looking for room to the 23. Well, what do you think? Would you have gone for the onside kick if you'd have been coached Don James or not? I, I don't not, think so. He's got plenty of time left in the, in the ball game. LSU's looking for the onside kick. They got LSU down deep. If LSU controls the football, 
Washington's not going to be able to win the game anyway. So whether they control it starting from the 23-yard line or control it from the 40 or 45, really doesn't make that much difference. Well, you know, coaches get criticized when they start playing conservatively with a uh, with a 20-point lead, and then they get criticized if they start throwing the ball around and lose it. So there is a defensive shot by the Huskies that put it on Gary James pretty good right there. I tell you, those guys came to play. Yep. And they're they're not going to fold up their tents and go home. You're going to see this defensive line come through into the LSU backfield, and they're meeting Gary James three yards behind the line of scrimmage. Tiger offense has got to come off the ball, keep Washington moving back the other way, not the way they went that time. And more important, LSU's got to keep the ball and score some more. Lynn Madsen made that tackle. Another thing, too, you don't want your, your ball club to start uh, thinking passively. Wickersham drops. Nothing passive about that. I suppose you like that one, huh, Bert? That's Mackey who caught that one for 17 yards. I like it a whole lot. I like the end result, but I'm not sure I like the pass because it was thrown into coverage. I think they probably could have utilized a little better play, but they got the play in. We did a fine job. You see the motor skills of being able to throw the ball where you want it, and that's the reason that pass was completed there. That was a blue darter, no doubt about that. First and 10, 10-12 10, to go in the fourth quarter. First down for the Tigers, Wickersham. James is hugged up again. The same play, it appears, and the same guys got in there. Uh, Lynn Madsen read that one beautifully again. Well, they tried to run a little counter action in the backfield, but it didn't fool anybody. Washington is getting control of the line of scrimmage. And when you do that, really, the counter play doesn't make any difference. If you're having a standoff, it may be one thing. There's a guy, when it was 34 to 7, he was ready to pack it in, go on home. I <laughs> see, he's confident. Wake, <laughs> wake him up and tell him. He's relaxed. Second and 13. Wickersham goes to the air. And he sent that one to whom it may concern along the sideline. That's a souvenir ball there. He had a screen trying to set up. They read it. They covered it. And he did the right thing. Put it in about three rows up. Uh, pick a pretty girl and give it to Now, her. that's pretty cool, isn't it? Rather than try to run it or try to do something spectacular, you just unload it and buck the bullet and say, well, I'll, go, I'll get him next time. 9.25 to go here in the ball game. They better do something pretty cool fast, though. They've only got 10 seconds left on the clock. Got to get this play off. Five, four, got it off. Another one intended for Mackey at the midfield stripe, but uh, not close. So the punting team comes on, and that's been a rare occasion tonight when Clay Parker's had to punt. He's only had to do so once, and that was for 23 yards. Danny Green is back on the 30. They have 10 men up on the line, and are they going for the block? Here they come. And it's another shank. What is this? Very bad exhibition of punting, that's for sure. But good Tiger football otherwise. 30 yards. 14. <laughs> Parker with punts of 20 and 23 and 30 yards. Uh, that's difficult to explain. And Jerry Stovall is discussing this with him at the present time. He's he's saying, look, you want me to get fired? Punting like that can cost the coach his job. First and 10. On the 36. Pallure. Wide open, Danny Green. The flag is down. I believe you're going to have a holding call. But if that's what it is, it's a fortunate thing for LSU because Green came wide open. Danny Stransky had gone downfield. He was also open. But after Green caught the ball, Stransky went back to try to block one of the LSU safeties coming across. And I think the official saw him stick his hand out. He see Pelour come back. And Green's coming across up underneath the coverage. He's wide open. And Stransky's coming in on the right. Apparently, he held his hand out, and the official saw him grab a jersey. So the 19-yard pickup will be nullified.
much to the approval of the 82,000 plus fans here tonight. An all time LSU Tiger record. Breaking the record set in the Florida State game by 3,000. And he called that a flip. Call it a now, flip. if you're an LSU fan, you're happy with the outcome, but from an objective standpoint, I just don't know that that was a flip. I thought Stransky had made a good block, and if he kept his hands in, I, I just don't know. The Huskies have been penalized about a mile and a half tonight. All right, first and 15. On their own 31, Stransky's in motion. Pelour running for his life, and he's down. Big Osborne, Clarence Osborne got him by the shirt. He lost his balance and staggered back to the 15-yard line. Roland Barbe helping with a 17-yard loss. And Pelour, by his own ability, made the loss much longer than it would have been if he had just gone ahead and got tackled when he first got grabbed. Ranked in the top 10 by two polls, ninth and seventh. The Huskies now face a second and 32, and Michael Brooks checks into the ball game at linebacker for the Tigers. The Tigers have shut down the running game, and the Huskies have had to fly all night. There's Stransky as a target, and it's picked off. Hobley comes up with the ball. a great play by Liverpool Hobley. LSU played in a three-deep secondary coverage that time, and Hobley was in the middle of the field. Pelour went back. He laid the ball up inside his receiver, who was covered anyway, but you see Hobley going from the middle of the field straight back to make a great interception, and LSU now has the ball on their own 42, but they do have the ball, and that's so important in this game. 7.46 to go. The Tigers lead 34-14. Excellent play by Hobley. And how about that? Wickersham goes to the air immediately. Wow, Fontenot is happy. Pearson and Hill on the hit 12-yard pickup. And so am I. I'll tell you, Fontenot figured very little in the offense the last two years. He caught 10 balls in two years, eight last year. And he's having himself a busy night tonight. Wickersham is 15 of 26 for 243 yards and a touchdown. And he scored twice on the ground himself by a sneak and by a naked reverse or a split roll or a we fooled him. Hilliard gets the call back. Well, that one didn't work as Lynn Madsen again was in there. They have some tackles that are tough. They're all lightweights, 240 to 250, but they come to play and they haven't stopped yet with seven minutes to go in the game. You'll see Washington's pursuit here. This is that same pitch LSU's run over and over and over. Been very successful with it this evening, but in the last two series, Washington has just decided to go to the ball, and their pursuit caught at that time for a loss. Second and 13. Lang gets the call straight ahead. Pickup of a couple, and Small stops him. Weak side linebacker, number five. He's tough when he's blocking, and he's tough when he's running. He seems to never give up. You know, a fullback like that takes a lot of beatings in the course of a game that the fans, uh, we, we don't see, the media doesn't see. He's getting, he's either blocking somebody or somebody's trying to knock him down while other people get the glory. That's true, but players like that will make you win. Third and 10, 6-11 to go in the ball game. Wickersham has a man, Martin again. And he's brought down by Leaphart, a 17-yard pickup, and Eric Martin is hotter than a depot stove. And there you see it. Jeff Wickersham, Eric Martin throwing the in, throwing the out, mixing it up. Here you see Dalton Hilliard hooking up, tight end crossing. Here comes Martin behind him. Boom, perfect pass, perfect reception, and another first down for LSU. If you run into that Leaphart, you're going to know you've been there, too. He's tough. First down on the 29-yard line of the Huskies. And there goes Hilliard to the 25. Looked at one of the Tigers jumped a little early on that snap. Browning made the hit. No flag on it. I think it was just that Lance Smith was so quick off the ball that time. He and the center left at the same time, and everybody else was a little bit slow. But 
Lance was fast enough to knock his fella about three yards downfield, and that's why they can pick up about a three-and-a-half-yard gain out of it. Billy McGill checks in at middle guard for the Huskies. We have 5.15 to go. The fans are happy here in Tigertown. Every tick of the clock brings them closer to a win over a, a ball club that was ranked ninth, seventh in two poles, and there goes Hilliard again, picking up yardage, being chased out of bounds. And it's Michael Collins doing the defensive work. Hilliard is now 19 carries for 121 yards. James has lost uh, five yards and a couple of carries, so he's 20 for 88. But that shows how the running game has been working tonight. That's 39 carries by the tailback. First and 10 on the 18. Jeff Wickersham getting experience tonight against a very good football team. Hilliard that time ran into his own man who was trying to lead the charge for him. Holmes makes the stop. The old familiar, hello mom. That time he stepped right on Jeff Fordham, it looked like, who was trying to pull out and lead for him. The Tiger shaking hands with the fans. 4.35 to go, look at that clock. Ticking away, 34-14 Tigers. This was picked as a one or two point, one way or the other, close game. The Tigers have led all the way. Here comes the reverse. Reverse. Doral, good block. To the 10. And two good blocks that time. One by Wickersham, one by Mike Gambrell. And Joe Kelly, that hard-hitting inside linebacker, finally brought him down. Here you're gonna see Wickersham block. That's a pretty good block for anybody. And a great block for a quarterback. And he's gonna see Durrell come up here. Mike Gambrell came across the field. Made a good kick out block on Vestey Jackson. Durrell stepped in behind it to pick up another seven or eight yards. They're still a little bit short of the first down, but they're certainly a lot closer than they were a little while ago. Virginia Durrell was a high school running back from Tucson Acadiana High School, was a very highly sought after running back and showed why he has that running ability on that play. Ellis, huh? LSU has the ball on the, let's see, where are they gonna mark it? Are they marking off another penalty? They are. There was a flag we didn't see there, gentlemen. The ball's inside the five. Personal foul. Personal foul on Joe Kelly. Probably for a little uh, extra work on the out of bounds. First goal, first and down, first and goal from the five. Hilliard. On a slant, he's racked up hard. Picked up about a yard, yard and a half. But the clock is still running. Four minutes, five seconds. Are you, ticking. Are you relaxed yet, Bert? It's not over till it's over, I'm telling you. Past Michigan. 34 to 14. Tigers lead. Doral comes into the play. What are you going to do here, Doug Morrow? I want to throw the ball. I want to run, run, run a play action pass. Play action. And let him throw it. All right. Guys not open, throw it out of the end zone. All right, that's what the boys are looking for. Boot oh, they're again. going to the bootleg again, but they read it, but he makes it anyhow. <laughs> or if you had let me have a chance to finish, the second thing I'll say is start running the bootleg. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure it was a call play or not because you see the tackle. He didn't try to block the end. He just, Jeff just took it on his own. And when you're on a roll, as Jeff Rickersham is today, you can do almost anything. Well, you know, they give the quarterback the option on that sweep, on the handoff sweep. The quarterback has the option whenever he wants to keep the football and run it himself. It's only his decision. He doesn't tell anybody else. He's going to get his name in the papers, Wickersham is. The kick by Batanzos is no good. Well, uh, you want to say something like that? Miss could be critical, Bert? Nope, I'm beginning to relax a little oh, okay. bit now. All right. 40 to 14 with 3.30 to go. You think we'll try an onside kick? 
I'll tell you, uh, Wickersham, let's see, he scored on a sneak, he scored on two rollouts, and he passed for a touchdown. Not bad for a young kid, as they say. Yeah, he may get to play some if he keeps that up, huh? Might get a game ball, get his yeah. name in a paper. My, President Reagan may call him. You never can tell. Uh, if I see him, I'm certainly going to congratulate him on a great game. Well, it has been a great game. Uh, the progress that he's shown since his first half against Florida State has been phenomenal, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Really, really has. Being a quarterback myself, you can just see him getting his feet under all the time. A little more confidence, a little more poise. There you see 10 plays, 58 yards, 4 minutes, 16 seconds, and a three-yard run. 40 to 14 with three and a half to go. Florida next week, and that game will we'll be doing uh, for Tiger Vision and also on the network that will be seen throughout a lot of the nation. So the Tiger fame will spread after this victory. You can bet on that. The Tonzos kicks it. Green takes it at the five. And look and who's making the tackle. Is that Batanzos down yes, there? Yes, sir. Along with Tony Nephew, 17-yard return. Batanzos is 5'7", and about 160 pounds soaking wet. He ought to stay out of situations like that. You know, I think he got mad because he missed the extra point. <laughs> or got, either that or got mad at the referee because he thought the extra point was good, and they called it, called it no good. Here you see Green taking the kick. He had a little grit, little open daylight there and there batons just came way <laughs> downfield tackling him behind the 20-yard line <laughs> all right here's jack robinson up to the 25 and he is stopped and stuffed and i guess don james thought everyone was going to expect the pass so we'll try to run it this time i'm Hobbly. sure jerry Soval says thank you for that play yeah probably and melosa on the tackle Jefferson is in. We notice some another freshman getting a lot of action. All right, second and eight. And the same. I guess they're just going to run it for a while. Maybe they've figured that there's not much chance of winning this ball game. Ricky Chapman makes the tackle on that play. Got a flag in here, and it looks like it's going to be against Washington. They're walking in that direction. Flag was thrown very early in the play where you normally would see the uh, penalty call for holding. Sean Burks and Chapman in there watching referee John Cook take another walk backwards. Holding is the call. Well, the Tigers have certainly grown into giant tigers tonight. I'm sure a lot of fans were depressed after the Rice game, but you can be impressed after this game. Malur, who's tight in, Leroy Lutu, and it's Ricky Chapman on the hit. We got another flag down. I believe this is going to be against LSU for a personal foul. Both teams are being very aggressive right now because both teams are very mad at each other which does happen sometimes, but LSU really has no reason to, to engage in that type of thing. The only thing they can do is hurt themselves. Good hard contact, though, and I think it was good clean contact just a little bit after the whistle, but two people were engaged in it, so it wasn't a cheap, a cheap shot by any nature. All right. See, Wilson is in, number 72. That's some playing time. Minute and 57 remaining. Malur wants to throw. Lutu has it at the 46. Ricky Chapman again on the tackle. Well, that helps your percentage, all right, but it doesn't do much other than that. Second and one. Minute and 35. 
Fleur is now 25 of 37 for 287 yards. But the Huskies have not been able to run the football tonight at all. They had 29 yards rushing the first half. And there's an example. I'll tell you, you've got to give a lot of credit to Jeffrey Dale. He came up the field and he destroyed the interference in front of the ball carrier, which allowed LSU's pursuit to come up. That's something that LSU's uh, linebacker secondary has not been doing the first two games. And it makes such a big difference because to get the interference completely out of the way, lose the ball carrier all alone, and he hasn't even gotten to the line of scrimmage. A great play by Dale. John Hazard, the freshman, is in. Uh, Henry Thomas, the nose guard. And there's a carry by Rick Finney, fullback. LSU is 36 seconds away from a big victory tonight. A tremendous victory for the Tigers. I can say that now, can I, Bert? You can say that now. They've outplayed them up and down this field tonight. Valor wants to throw one more. And Stransky gathers it in at the 28. Rolls out of bounds. 14 seconds remaining. Oh, they called it out of bounds when he caught it. All right. Fleur is still looking to the sideline for a play to be sent in. I was a coach. I'd say you think of something along about this time. <laughs> Washington has a net 30 yards rushing. Well, you know, Don James was right when, when asked about his ranking. He just said that his team did not deserve to be ranked that high earlier this week. Said he didn't feel he had that good a team. And I think he has a well-coached team, but he was correct about what he said. All right, Pelour. And the tight end, Lutu, dropped the ball at the 35. And the wheels have come off for the Huskies with eight seconds to go. 40 to 14 Tigers. Jerry Stovall should be relaxed a little bit. He has his two state troopers down there now ready to provide him with a convoy off the field. You know, Wayne, I think this game is very similar to the Florida State game of a year ago. I don't believe that the difference in the game is as much of a difference as the score in the case. LSU's played very well, but Washington's hurt himself an awful lot. Yeah, they have that the penalty. There's a pass that brings it down to two seconds to go, and then Lutu went out of bounds and stopped the clock. Well, how about that? This one, the fans were ready to count down to zero and jump out of their seats. A lot of fans have left the scene here, getting a little head start in the traffic. But they're happy. Probably out in the parking lot doing handspring. <laughs> Only the gifted one. <laughs> yeah. All right, this is the final play. Pelour, another short pass to Stransky, and he's knocked out of bounds, and that's it. Stovall and Don James shake hands at the center of the field. The LSU Tigers.